some commanders in rise of kingdoms only need two skills to be super effective on the battlefield and knowing which ones those are can save you a ton of legendary commander sculptures that you might want to invest somewhere else so today we're going to talk about some commanders that only need 190 legendary commander sculptures to be super effective what's going on guys cheers now if you're a new player i just want to explain this really quickly you may hear some people say five five one one or five five one five or something like that what players are referring to are the skill distributions here in the bottom corner so the first skill is at five the second skill at five the third skill at one the fourth skill at one that's what people mean when you see them break it down like that and a majority of the commanders we're going to talk about in today's video are really effective at five five one one and this is a super important configuration because as you're leveling up a commander you don't really have control over which skill gets leveled up unless you use the skill lock feature which essentially you can lock the commander at the second skill which will guarantee a five five one one configuration now there are some commanders that have most of their value in their first skill skill and their fourth skill and we'll talk about those as well but luckily they're few and far between so let's jump right into it with some honorable mentions okay these are commanders that I do not think you should invest your legendary commander sculptures into to get them to five five one one however they are effective at five five one one and the first honorable mentions and this is more so a category and that is gold key commanders which is why you see Charles Martel here on the screen what do I want that's that's an attitude sir anyway everyone knows that the first two skills on Charles Martel are super effective the third skill doesn't do anything in the open fields anyway and the fourth skill still gives you 10 percent counterattack damage when he's in the open field even if it's only at one point so at five five one one he's super effective however because he's a gold key commander I wouldn't recommend investing those universals they're so precious into a gold key commander that eventually you're gonna have more of him than you know what to do with I have 551 of his sculptures just sitting around chilling I can't do anything with them so the other honorable mentions in the gold key category include Cao Cao except you would want him to be 5151 Mehmed obviously El Cid Mulan of course Thutmose especially and pretty much any other gold key commander next as an honorable mention let's talk about Minamoto because Minamoto is not a commander that everybody's gonna have access to because you actually have to spend money on him and honestly Honestly, I don't really think he's a great investment. However, if you do pay to get him to 5511, I would say you would have a majority of his value, right? Because you have all of the stats that you get on this second skill his active skill is where he deals most of his damage the third skill is pve related doesn't really matter and the fourth skill will still give you a 10 percent damage taken increase if it does occur and you're missing out on the expertise which does suck but you can also still get the relic for minamoto which will be nice so if you do want to buy minamoto but you don't want to expertise him 5511 is a good place to stop next let's talk about constantine at 5511 as an honorable mention right because he's still a commander that gives you a ton of value at 5511 but the reason he's an honorable mention is because I don't really think that he's worth investing in these days if you're focusing on Sunset Canyon then 5511 is going to be it's it's golden it's perfect this is all you need it doesn't really matter the expertise is great but it's so expensive to get him there and unless he's going to be in garrison you don't need these last two skills however in the open field for PvP combat like yeah his buff is really nice but he's really just a punching bag he doesn't deal any damage he's a huge target so I no longer really recommend getting Constantine to 5511 now the same thing I would say applies to Trajan now Trajan I would say is a little bit better than Constantine of course and if you're a whale expertising Trajan is probably a good idea for a sixth or seventh March uh, you do get a ton of value at 5511 but as a free-to-play player with uh, you know as a leadership or even a low spender right because that's mainly who's going to be enjoying this video is people who don't have so many sculptures uh Trajan's just not that great of an investment and the reason for that is his active skill makes him take 25 percent increased damage for three seconds so while he does provide a ton of support in the open field if he's not expertise then his stacks of defense are not going to really be as powerful which means they're not going to counteract the amount of damage that you're going to be taking you're also missing out on the expertise which enhances that so again he would be good in sunset canyon at 5511 but 
I just don't think he's worth it anymore and the final honorable mention is Leonidas and this one might be a little bit controversial uh Leonidas at 5511 is extremely good value and it's really just for Guan Yu there's no really under other good use for Leonidas at 5511 other than as a secondary to Guan Yu but I no longer really feel like this is a great investment even at 5511 even being super cheap as an investment build he's so slow and he's so power crept out of the game at this point that really he's going to be put on the bench very quickly once you start investing in your second third fourth March I mean you just don't have a use for Leonidas anymore and you know it, again if you really wanted to put him behind Guan he's good there and if you had asked me a year and a half ago I would say sure go for it but at this point I feel like Leonidas is just too old so yes he's good at 5511 but I wouldn't recommend it anymore all right now let's start to talk about some 5511 infantry commanders that I think if you left them there they would be pretty good the first one is Richard now Richard is in a unique position because I don't really recommend using him for PvP of course you know maybe in KvK one but besides that he's really not great for PvP the reason you would get him to five five one one or even five one 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 is just to chain barbarians in the open field with YSG as his secondary this is because he is super tanky on pretty much all of his skills but especially the first two damage taken reduction counter attack damage huge healing factor damage reduction there's a lot to love here and also this first skill or sorry the third skill is still going to give you 10 percent of infantry stats and the fourth skill it'll boost your healing by 10 percent but really it's nothing crazy and the expertise is fine the 50 percent march speed reduction at every 10 seconds is actually huge in pvp but that's a very niche role so i wouldn't worry about it five five one one richard is done i would say don't even worry about it past that next let's talk about sargon going from the oldest commander in infantry to the newest commander in infantry sargon at five five one one is exceptional however i would actually recommend a five five one zero uh the reason for that it will explain in a moment but his first skill being at five is a huge single target damage factor over five seconds second skill at five is going to give you you a majority of his value here which is the 100 probability of inflicting a stack of odd which is the debuff that sargon provides which is basically the reason that people use him anyway so having this uh, at five is huge you're going to get a ton of infantry health a little bit of attack as well the third skill being at one is going to give you a small amount of march speed small amount of extra infantry damage and a 10 percent chance of gaining 10 percent damage so it's it's not a lot but it is again free just by unlocking it and the reason that you wouldn't unlock the fourth skill is pretty self-explanatory here but this is the skill that actually removes the odd debuff effect in favor of instant proc damage plus a shield now if you did unlock this that's fine you're still going to get the 500 damage factor two percent defense and a small shield which is okay but if you don't unlock this what that means is you're going to just constantly inflict that odd debuff to the target and those that debuff is never going to get removed it's just going to stay there the target is going to stay debuffed for a long period of time and for most people that's what they want out of sargon anyway so at 5510 i would say you get a majority of his value and you can leave him there he'll be just fine you can use him as a secondary to someone like Guan Yu or you could use him as a primary for somebody like CPO Prime in the same vein as Sargon we can talk about Tark okay this is a commander where if all you want is a cheap infantry investment for massive damage factor this is your guy at 5511 he does a ton 20 200 damage factor here with an additional 300 damage factor if you are being surrounded and his second skill gives you 40 percent infantry attack and 10 percent bonus damage to cavalry this is a very anti-meta bonus damage here right there's a lot of calves in the open field right now so dealing 10 percent more damage to them is nice Plus, you're going to gain some march speed that you desperately need the third skill being at one doesn't even matter in the open field because it doesn't do anything and the fourth skill being at one will still give you a five percent damage bonus and a ten percent chance to reduce the enemy target rage by 40 rage per second for three seconds so that's basically half the rage value by just unlocking this right it's it's 40 by default so tons of value here at a 5511 Tarek. so if you're going into kvk and you just want a massive amount of damage for infantry this is probably one of the cheapest ways you can do it and lastly let's talk about Heraclius as an infantry commander because I think that that is where most people are going to use him if they decide to use him in the open field I don't have a section for leadership in this video so we'll talk about him here but the first skill being at five here is a 1200 circular AoE which is huge and a 1200 shielding factor which is really nice second skill being at five gives you 30 percent bonus health universal on top of that he'll be solid as a garrison for your city now of course at 5511 you're not going to use him to garrison a flag or a fort or anything like that 
but in the off chance that your city actually gets hit you'll gain 40 percent bonus counterattack damage which i would say is pretty good third skill being at one still gives you 10 percent bonus skill damage which hey it's free it's nice and you're gonna get a 200 damage factor shield for free which provides a lot of utility for commanders like guan yu if you decide to pair them together the fourth skill being unlocked still gives you 500 instant proc damage factor to anybody who happens to hit you in the open field and again if he's on your city wall you'll still gain six percent of stats it's small but it's free i would say five five one one for heraclius is a uh, definitely a majority of his value next let's talk about cavalry we have to talk about William obviously his first skill gives you 1500 damage factor to three targets it's a weird AoE but it does have a nice March speed reduction and any bonus skill damage buffs that the targets take is not applied which is huge second skill at five gives you 20 percent Cavalry attack 15 percent Cavalry March speed and 10 percent bonus damage outside of Alliance territory so love to see it now I can't show the progression for the third skill because this is actually his expertise but at one this still gives you 10 percent cavalry attack on top of that you have a 10 percent chance to deal instant proc damage now when he's expertise it's a thousand but when this skill is at one it's still at 600 which I mean that's a majority of the value and if the target is surrounded it'll still deal an additional 40 damage factor per target with a maximum of five so yeah a majority of the value for this third skill is there at one which is nice and of course the fourth skill is even more value at one which will still give you 10 percent extra defense when you hit a target with your active skill but if you hit two or more you're actually going to give 50 rage per second for yourself and nearby allies for three seconds that's 150 rage that's a huge rage engine for free and this does not go up with the amount of points you put in here so this part of the skill is the best part and you get all of its value at one which is massive the next commander we can talk about is actually Bertrand which I don't even have unlocked now this commander I wouldn't really recommend at 5511 but most of his value is there at 5511 and if you're a cavalry main who just wants a cheap investment going into kvk you might consider this here okay three seconds you get 700 damage factor per second which is a lot of damage factor and you're reducing their rage by 60. it's pretty good second skill at five gives you 10% cav attack, 10% cav defense, 10% cav march speed, and 5% damage taken reduction. I know these numbers aren't huge here, but again, it's four different attributes that are buffed by a single skill. That's huge. Third skill being at one doesn't even matter because this is just for rallies. So in the open field, whether this is at one or five doesn't make a difference. And the fourth skill being at one will still give you 10% cavalry defense and a 100 healing factor. Pretty solid. Now, I wanted to include Zhang Yu in this portion, but I just don't think I can. 5511, sure. The third skill doesn't do anything in the open field. And the fourth skill being at one is still going to give you a little bit of value here. But the thing about Zhang Yu is he's such a glass cannon that if you're gonna if you're gonna go for him you have to go all in you have to get that expertise I mean he just gets melted so quickly that if you don't have every ounce of value you can get out of him I just don't know if I can recommend it but you know if you look at his kit here yes a majority of the value is in the first two skills absolutely it's just if you're going to do a 5511 Zhang Yu, do it at your own risk because it is it is definitely risky. All right, next let's talk about archers. And I'm actually going to start with Tamiris. She's the weirdest one here because she, just like Joan of Arc Prime, is best at 5115. The reason for this is because obviously you're active skilled. This is where she's dealing direct damage factor and damage factor because of her poison stacks. And the fourth skill is how you're going to get those poison stacks. So literally you apply one stack of poison for every normal attack and the only way to guarantee that every turn is to get this to five so essentially all she's going to be doing is dealing single target damage and applying these poison stacks in the open field which is huge the second skill at one doesn't even matter because it's for attacking cities and the third skill being at one is still going to give you 10 percent archer attack and a 10 percent chance to reduce the target's defense by 10 percent so yes this third skill being at five would be definitely better but at five one one five you're going to get a majority of what you need out of tamiris let's talk about artemisia this is bay right here okay five five one one artemisia is actually really good for a value investment she's going to get 1800 damage factor aoe which is huge and her second skill is really tanky 20 percent archer defense and 20 percent archer health that's 40 percent of the best stats that you can have for archers with the really solid aoe the third skill here is just for garrison so in the open field this doesn't even matter that it's at one and the fourth skill being at one it's going to give her 25 percent increased damage for five seconds now if you don't want to silence her which effectively will lower her rage engine you could leave this at zero and just do five five zero zero basically and that would be fine but yeah five five one one artemisia especially behind somebody like a Boudica, is a huge value investment especially because Boudica expertise 
is most of the time going to nullify the self silence here which is just going to give you a flat 25 percent damage for five seconds that is huge next we'll talk about nebu okay nebu is also a really powerful aoe commander for archers 1500 damage factor it's a lower damage factor than artemnesia but it hits five targets which is way better we love to see this second skill here still gives you 30 percent archer defense and 15 percent march speed you really like to see that march speed on archers and the tankiness here is insane the third skill being at one doesn't matter because it's just for rallies and the fourth skill being at one still gives you a three percent damage bonus and a 20 rage reduction to the target now ideally you would want this skill at five but again at five five one one i would say a majority of his value is here for sure so if you're going into kvk you only have 190 sculptures i would say nebu at five five one one is a really good value investment to slap in front of somebody like isong ye or behind somebody like Boudica. now cyrus i believe came out at the same time as nebu and he's also really good at five five one one if you look at his first skill single target damage factor it's a little low these days but the target's going to take 20 percent increased additional damage for three seconds that's a really powerful debuff to the target and his second skill gives you 30 percent archer attack and 15 percent march speed so again the march speed here is really good for archers the third skill being at one still gives you a lot of value it's going to give 100 additional damage factor per second for three seconds so that's 300 instant proc free damage factor and when this is going on the target actually deals 20 percent less skill damage that's a pretty powerful debuff as well and the third skill being at one it's going to give you half the value as if it were at five so you have a 10 percent chance to deal circular aoe to three targets for two seconds so it's 300 damage factor for free in a circular aoe and again when this is at five it's only 300 so you're still getting half the value just by unlocking this skill cyrus i would say is more of a niche commander but definitely a majority of his value is there at 5511. next let's talk about our boy Gilgamesh okay freaking Giga Chad always hits chest day always does delts always does biceps okay his first skill is sort of just a weaker version of CPO Prime but 30 percent health reduction for three seconds and a 1500 single target damage factor is solid second skill gives you 30 percent archer health which is huge that's a really powerful health buff here and if the target has less than 50 percent troops remaining you're going to deal 20 percent more archer damage that's really really good third skill being at one doesn't even matter because this is a rallying commander and the fourth skill being at one still gives you more than half of the value from that blood craving debuff but less than half the value of the normal attack damage taken reduction so two percent less normal attack damage taken and 300 damage factor if the target is healing that's pretty good a lot of commanders have a little bit of healing that you don't even realize for example Boudica actually has healing on her fourth skill so if she heals when she's being hit by a Gilgamesh it's actually going to deal damage to her and you do you get that for free just by unlocking the skill so 551 Gilgamesh is he the best no definitely not but he's cheap and if you need an extra archer then he might be one that you look at and finally let's talk about Henry dude Henry at 5511 is exceptionally good his first skill massive single target damage factor at 2300 and you're going to take 30 percent less skill damage for five seconds that's a really powerful buff that lasts for a really long time second skill being at five gives you 20 percent archer attack and 20 percent archer defense 40 percent of stats we love to see that plus 20 percent extra march speed outside of territory which again is huge for archers third skill being at one is just for rallies so this doesn't even matter and the fourth skill being at one gives you two percent extra archer damage and when you're attacked there is a 10 percent chance to deal 400 damage factor to that target which is half the value of the 800 if this had been at five so you would get a majority of the value of Henry at 5511 this is a slam dunk investment at, in my opinion at 5511 definitely one of the best 5511 investments in uh, in the archer category especially if you want to throw an expertise YSG behind him yes the expertise on Henry is quite good I would say especially if you're going to run YSG behind him but still 5511 is a great investment okay next let's talk about some commanders that are really good at 5511 but you should absolutely expertise them so in other words at 5511 you should start to use them but don't stop there and the first one obviously we're going to talk about is YSG okay YSG at 5511 is actually really good he has a really solid 1400 damage factor 
five target aoe and he's still going to gain 20 percent extra skill damage which is the same as sun tzu expertise and he's still going to give you that rage engine with 100 archer attack which is nice so a lot of his kit is finished here and you can absolutely use him as a secondary at 5511 however this fourth skill is super valuable i mean 50 percent extra skill damage is huge and of course the main reason people expertise him is for that circular aoe this is going to help you chaining barbarians in the open field you're going to get a ton of value out of that and it's going to just help you hit a ton of enemy targets in pvp combat so definitely expertise Yi song yay but at 5511 he's very good next we'll talk about alexander the great who's also in the same boat here his first and second skill give you a ton of value at 5511 he has a 1200 damage factor shield and he gives a small shield to a near nearby ally which is really nice his second skill here is going to do single target instant proc damage which is really good and prevents you from taking uh, damage reduction debuffs the third skill at one is still going to give you 10 percent attack and 10 percent march speed and the fourth skill at one is still going to give you 20 percent attack and 10 percent defense if you have the shield up so you're still gaining a ton of infantry stats here at 5511 but it's pretty clear that uh, you want more of these stats right you want all of these stats that you can get for alexander the great especially because now he's starting to be a little bit of an older commander so you want to have all the stats you can get so yes 5511 you can can start to use him as a secondary commander but you definitely should expertise him if you're going to invest in him at all next let's talk about cpo prime okay cpo prime is super good he's arguably the best commander in the game right now his first skill and second skill being at five gives you a ton of aoe damage massive debuff 40 percent attack and if the third skill is at one you still get 10 percent infantry health that's half of what you would get if it was at five and the additional damage factor is half of what you would get if it was at five so essentially you're getting 50 percent of the value for this skill just by unlocking it which is free which we love and then the fourth skill is almost the same you'll have a 50 percent chance of reducing skill damage by 10 percent and when that happens you'll get a 250 damage factor shield for free so these last two skills again you definitely want to expertise this commander because his expertise is pretty good as well but at 5511 you're getting a majority of his value which is super effective and that's why Scipio is so good next we can talk about Boudica obviously this is another commander that you absolutely should expertise the fact that her expertise has an 80 percent chance to remove silence and other control effects is massive but a big reason that people use Boudica is because of her massive single target damage factor and this super high 35 percent skill damage take can debuff that you can apply to a target as well as a 30 percent march speed reduction super good active skill here second skill gives you 30 percent attack and 30 percent defense when you go under 80 percent plus a little bit of march speed as well the third skill being at one still gives you a 10 percent skill damage taken reduction and a very small amount of normal attack damage bonus but keep in mind that this second half of the skill is only for one turn so yes it's way better at five but it's again it's only one turn nothing huge and the fourth skill at one still gives you half the healing factor for free which is good and only one percent extra damage to infantry so overall a majority of her value is on is in her first two skills so definitely start to use her at 5511 but eventually you want to get that expertise everyone knew I was going to talk about Nevsky next okay same thing here massive single target damage factor and a really powerful defense reduction on the active skill second skill is going to give you 20 percent attack 20 percent health and 20 percent march speed now some of this is only outside alliance territory but still that's a massive amount of stats and at one here you're still going to get 10 percent extra defense for free that's half the the value of five you'll get a little bit of bonus to surrounded targets and you're still going to get a five percent skill damage bonus for free when this fourth skill is at one with an additional 15 percent when active skills are cast so really powerful at five five one one but definitely worth getting that expertise he is an exceptional commander and the final commander for the should expertise category is of course Joan of Arc Prime now she's unique because she is not great at 5511 but she's exceptional at 5115 which is a very difficult configuration to pull off however for 190 commander sculptures if you can get that that would be absolutely huge now the first skill obviously massive aoe damage factor rage restoration for your allies damage bonus is huge and then the fourth skill being at five essentially gives you 10 percent cavalry health which is really good and a 100 chance to cast her active skill again which is also again where her most of her value comes from 
the third skill being at one doesn't really matter that much and the second skill being at one yes you're missing out on some cavalry attack and March speed plus some normal attack damage of course so she is definitely commander you want to expertise but for 190 sculptures 5115 would be massive anyway guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton while you're down there subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video comment down below your favorite 5511 investments who do you think is the best value at 5511 I would love to hear from you guys and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon Peace.